Hello, beautiful people. Hi, everybody. Um, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever in the world that you are. Good morning if it's the morning where you are. Good afternoon if it's the afternoon where you are. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, thank you so much for joining. My name is Fauzi, and I'm going to be your host for today's Office Hours. It's good to see everybody here. I'm trying to set up a couple of things but while I'm doing that please say hello in the comment section tell me your name tell me where you're joining us from my name is Fauzi and I'm joining from Nigeria tell me where you are joining us from so I can say hello to you hello Ethan hello 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 hi Saeed hi Daniel from Nigeria Hello, Gus Blex from India, Emma from Nigeria. It's good to see everybody. Hello, Fatima from Kaduna, Nigeria. Umeima from Morocco, Mariam from Nigeria, Sahid from Nigeria, Darlington from Nigeria, Suleiman from Nigeria. Woo! Tina Gozim from Nigeria, Nadia from Tanzania, Savior from Nigeria. It's good to see everybody here. I'm just going to try and find um, the Propel team so that I'm sure that they're ready to start dishing out value. Um, this is a session that is going to be majorly covering a lot of things about finding jobs, networking, keeping jobs, um, negotiating, there's just so much packed in this session, and I hope that you have your notepad ready um, to go. Give me a sec to find them. Keep, keep coming with the introductions. Love to see it.
Hi, people. I can see your messages in the chat box. I have spoken for a couple of minutes. Um, I mentioned that you should give a few minutes for the Propel team to join because um, they're the ones that like to have a conversation with you. I have spoken and we've started introductions. If you're just joining us, please introduce yourself in the comment section. Tell us your name and where you're joining us from. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. Hi hey guys, so sorry about the delay. I just called them and they'll be joining shortly. I hope you like my music. Let me allow you guys to unmute if you want to have conversations. Um, in the meantime, and then as soon as we're ready to start, I'll remove the permission. Okay. For tomorrow night, you see that there'll be gone soon. So many things I have to do. But if all of these dreams might find a way into my day to day scene, I'll be under the Hello, Lola yeah. Day. Yeah. You guys should not let me remove it though. Only on mute if you want to say something. Maybe you want to introduce yourself. Or maybe you want to talk about how excited you are about this session. It's easier to sing. Whenever you say, Yo! I'm a. I think we've got somebody here. Hello, Zoom. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Can you guys hear Zoom in the comments? Say something if you can hear us. She's about to. Get Hi, started. can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Hello, good evening. Yeah. 
All right, awesome. We're ready to get started. And just before we do that, I'll give you a chance to introduce Propel to the community and then you can kickstart your office hour. Okay. Um, all right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Zoom. I'm sorry I can't turn up my turn on my camera right now. Um, but um I work at Propel, I'm the programs manager at Propel. And at Propel, we're all about three things, um, connecting people to global jobs, that's jobs across Europe, North America, and Africa. And then secondly, we also provide um, techs and deals. What I mean is it's counted products and services, you know, that would aid not just your career, but also solve some of the pressing needs. And third, um, one of the things we do is financial inclusion, and we do this through our uh, embedded, you know, finance. So one of the things we do is ensure that you have um, access to financing to get the work tools you need, because we know how hard that can be, especially when you're starting out. And then secondly, we also provide loans for you to solve some of your immediate problems that might not be directly related to work. And um, I think you take it from here. My colleague is on the call. She will be the one speaking to us this evening. Um, thank you for the opportunity. All right, thank you so much. Um, I'm trying to find Choma, right? I'm guessing she's Chi here. Hello, Choma, can you hear us? Yes, you are correct. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. And thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. You have the floor, Choma. Oh, great. Thank you. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Chi, and I'm a tech recruiter at Propel. And it um, feels so good to be here. It feels so good to um, speak to you and have this conversation with you, considering the fact that um, we'll always come back to you and always come back to your communities when we need talents for um, placements. Thank you once again for having me and um, it's really good to be here. All right, so um, I'll just share my screen and then we kick off in a bit. Sorry, I'm having a bit of a problem sharing my screen. Is there anything I can do to help? Maybe do you want to send it um, to me so that I can share my own screen? Okay. Um, how do I share with you now? Or you can just use the email thread. Okay, okay. When I wake up, you look so pretty, sleeping next to me.
Let's check your end. I don't have it yet, but I'm um, okay. Awesome. I have it now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good evening once again, everyone. All right, so I'm going to be talking about um, finding your next career move, how you're able to, you know, um, find a remote job, how you're able to attract um, interviews and how you're also able to interview everything about um, finding your next job, just a guide, basically. Next slide, please. All right, so um, the job market is more competitive than ever, but here's the good news. With the right tools and knowledge, you can stand out and land your dream job. I know we hear um, a lot about, um, wait, am I audible enough? Yes, you are. All right, okay, so I know we hear a lot about um, finding it very difficult to get the job. We hear um, a lot of things about how it is um, stressful, how people are not able to get interviews, how people are not able to even um, get invites or even find jobs. So people even find it very difficult to find a job. And um, there are processes to this thing, there are techniques to um, all of this. And we are going to be talking about um, the ways we are able um, the ways you are supposed to go about it that will make it a lot easier for you, make you more um, attractive to recruiters or make your brand more attractive to recruiters and um, at the end of the day to finally land your dream job. Next slide, please. Okay, so can you please go back? All right, thank you. Okay, so for um Let's give me a minute. All right, so um, finding job opportunities. We'll start with discussing um, finding job opportunities is a very broad um, topic of discussion, but um, I'm going to streamline it into two parts. First of all, building um, building um, your um, digital brand that is um, how you're able to sell yourself how you're able to make yourself and your brand very attractive to recruiters and also strategies for identifying and targeting remote job opportunities next slide for some reason it's taking a bit to move to the next slide <laughs> Oh, I wonder what the issue is. Uh, okay, I guess I should use. Okay, all right. Okay, so first of all, um, strategies for identifying and targeting remote job opportunities. Um, I've been able to streamline into six points. And the first we'll be talking about building a strong online presence. Um, we're talking about remote jobs. And um, first of all, before you're able to land a job, you should be seen. 
So for you to be seen, you should be able to, you should have um, an online presence either um, on social media or um, LinkedIn or any other um, professional networking profiles where you're able to showcase your skills and your experience. So say for software engineers, you should have um, a GitHub um, profile where you're able to you know give details of the projects you've worked on give details of the um of your codes and every other thing that you have there then you have for digital marketers you should have your portfolio where you're able to you know showcase your um, brands that you've worked on your content your um, copywriting skills just everything on your accomplishments then for um, designers, the makers of Behance, and then just generally whatever it is or whatever platform you know you are able to showcase your skills and your experience and then let people know that this is what I do, this is what I've been doing, and these are the projects I've been able to work on. And we have LinkedIn as well. LinkedIn is the most um, common of all where um, people are able to you know showcase where they've worked their experiences their achievements the skills that they have so that um when recruiters or um people that need talents are going through these profiles they're able to see you and say okay yes this person has what i'm looking for let me reach out to this person and um, have a conversation with this person to know what the person can bring to the table now, um, leveraging online communities, um, a typical e example is Ingressive. Um, here you leverage on online communities where you're able to get resources. Um, you're able to you're able to get resources, you're able to get um you're able to get support, you're able to get um, events that are scheduled and arranged um, specifically for you, like this right now, where you're able to get um, job postings, where you're able to get links to um, cast platforms that provide a lot of job, also provide a lot of perks, like um, Propel, for example, we have a cast platform where um, we post jobs, where we post our perks, our benefits, and all of that um, through Ingress if you're able to assess that and in turn um, able to apply for whatever job fits your skills that is also um, a very good strategy to be able to you know target remote jobs then um remote friendly companies there are a lot of friend there are a lot of remote friendly companies right now um don't restrict yourself to your locality don't restrict yourself to your country alone look for um, research and target companies that are known for remote jobs, check their websites, check their career pages for job listings. Just You, you can even just go on LinkedIn, type um, at the search bar, type remote jobs and your um, skills that you have or your job title. You would see a lot, a lot, a lot of remote jobs for you where you can apply and, you know, where you can apply. Then um, attend um, virtual job fairs and webinars. There are a lot of job fairs. There are a lot of webinars where um, you're able to go. I, I think I heard something about, someone, was, someone mentioned something about um, some provinces in Canada that um, I think have a job, a, a job fair later this month where um, people are able to go pitch and, you know, get hired if um, a recruiter, um, you know, sees them to be of value. There are a lot of job fairs like that. There are a lot of webinars like that where you can go for, where you can, sorry, where you can um, attend and get um, knowledge, info, and resources about um, remote jobs. Then network, um, we cannot overemphasize on this. Network, 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 network everywhere. Network on LinkedIn, network in um, amongst your pairs. Net, net, network even in your communities. Network, get involved, speak with people, um, reach out to people, talk about yourself, talk about your skills. Um, just go around, tell people what you do. You never can tell where you'll be able to get um, that connection to your next job. So networking is a very, very um, huge strategy. Then leverage on social media. Um, uh, for tech rules, particularly, I would always mention Twitter. Twitter is a very great social media platform for um, getting 
um, remote jobs, um, getting any jobs generally. So um, leverage um, social media platforms. Don't just use your social media platform for entertainment alone. There are a lot of job opportunities you can find um, via social media. There are a lot of um, recruiters you can reach out to. I, as a recruiter, I go to Twitter to, um, you know, source for candidates. I go to, if I go on Facebook to source for candidates, there are Facebook, there are communities, there are tech communities on Facebook as well. There are a lot of communities on, um, we have um, tech spaces on Twitter as well. You can always go and get, um, you know, links to all those remote jobs. Next slide, please. All right, so um, writing an attention grabbing resume for um, remote job applications. Yeah, um, I really like to talk about this because it's not just enough for you to be able to identify and, um, you know, um, it's not, it's not enough for you to um, identify remote jobs. It's not enough for you to apply all those strategies. After applying all those strategies, after um, seeing all the job listings, how are you able to um, attract the recruiter or make yourself very attractive for the recruiter to want to speak to or to even want to send an invitation for interview? Now, the first point of contact is usually your CV. When um, we, we, we've we had um, situations where we ask people for CVs and they send in their CVs and because of the way their CVs are, we are not able to invite them for interviews or their CVs are not able to give us um you know, proper info about their skills and what they're able to do or what value they'll be able to bring for us. Now, um, your resume is like your, is a billboard for you. It is only uh, before I'm able to even give you attention to speak with you, I should be able to go through your resume and your resume should be able to tell me what I need to know about you before I invite you over to have a proper conversation concerning whatever it is I have read or seen on your resume. Now, um, a lot of people do not have a proper resume. And now that um, a lot of companies use ATS, you just realize that you apply and then you're not called just because the ATS is just, you know, kicking you out, kicking you out of the, kicking your application out. Not that you don't have the skills, but your resume isn't telling us that you have those skills. Now I'm going to break it down real quick, um, you know, describing and making you understand how you're able to draft your resume. Now, first of all, I'm going to talk about um, the format. Um, the important point to note on your resume, first of all, um, we'll start with your contact info. We don't need a lot of information when it comes to that. We just need your name, your email, and your phone number. If you're going to put your address, you can just put your um, your country or maybe put your area. I'll use Nigeria, for example. You can just say Lagos, Nigeria. Or if you're in Kenya, you can just say Nairobi, Kenya. You don't need to put out all of your address. You don't need to put your marital status. You don't need to put your sex, your religion. No, you don't need all of um, all of that. All you just need to put is your, your name, your email, and your phone number. That will do. Then you, um, you should have a professional summary. It should be a very short statement that would highlight your career goals. Um, for entry level, it should just be a very short statement that will highlight your career go goals, what you're looking at, your objective, or what you know you hope to achieve in whatever company you know you um you are hired into then for people that already have experience um you should your professional summary should be able to highlight your relevant skills and what you can bring to the table basically sell yourself in a very very um concise form um nothing just a, a paragraph is fine just sell yourself. My name is this. I have um, so, so, so years of experience. I've been able to work on this. I've been able to work on that. Or uh, my name is this. I have so, so years of experience. These are the skills I have and I've been able to apply them to this, this, this and that. Very, very short and simple. Then next, you should have um, your professional um, experience. 
now when i say your professional experience i'm referring to the places you have worked you list the places where you have worked you start from the most recent i see some people start from the first place they worked no the most recent should be at the top now what do you need to put in there you just put in um, the company name the job title the employment date that will do then underneath you could just put um, a brief description of your responsibilities and um, achievements or better still you just put the company name your job title then um, the employment date and then you in bullet points just put down just draft um your key responsibilities and also your achievements is not enough to just write your responsibilities you should be able to write your achievements now the difference between your responsibilities and your achievements is that your responsibilities are um the your day-to-day -day activities the things you do or the things that were given to you in your job description to do now did you do them and what did you achieve or what were you able to achieve when you were there it's not just enough for you to you know it's not just enough for you to well, someone is saying he can hear can can am i audible i can hear you all right great okay so it's not enough for you to um just say um, I, I, I did this, I did this, I did that. You should be able to quantify, you should be able to qualify what you did and tell us what you achieved in that period you worked in so, so, so place. Then after that, your education should be there also starting from the most recent. You should have, um, if your most recent is your master's, you can put in your master's, you put your the name of the institution and then the dates. If it is your degree, you put your degree, you put the institution, you put the dates. You don't need to start putting um, your um, CGP or a lot of stories around it. No, just make it very simple. Your CV should just be very, very simple. Also, make sure that you're putting the most recent first. Whatever you're doing on your CV, make sure the most recent comes first. Then you have your skills. Now your skills are divided into two. You have your technical skills and you have your soft skills. Ensure that both appear on your CV. Your technical skills, when I say technical skills, um, I'm referring to, um, let's say if you're a software engineer, your technical skills will be your programming languages, your technical skills will be your basically your programming languages, your frameworks, and every other technical thing that you know um, applies to the job you do. If you're a if you're a designer, you know um, the technical skills a designer needs that you put in there. If you're a digital marketer, yeah, your technical skills will be copywriting, maybe. Um, it could be um, SEO, maybe it could be anything. If you're a data analyst, your technical skill could be um, maybe Power BI, it could be Python or just, just technical skills. I hope we understand what I mean by technical skills. Then at the same time, you should have your soft, soft skills there. Your soft skills could be um, communication. You're a good communicator. It could be your... Um, interpersonal skills it could also be um, project management skills it could be just everything soft skills should be there now for these skills some people put their skills immediately after their professional summary which is fine while some people put it after their education which is also fine while putting your skills i also advise you put the tools you've worked with now, there are a lot of technical tools you've worked with. I advise you put it there, be it project management tools, be it collaboration tools, be it um, the tools you use in actually doing your work. Please put all of it there as well. Then a very important thing is your projects and your portfolios. If you have a link to them, please put the link to your projects and your portfolios. It saves a lot of time. Um, the truth is, if I am, uh, if I'm going through CVs and I see a CV with link and portfolio, I'll attend to them quickly because it will take a longer time for me to reach out to the other person that doesn't have his or her link on her CV. So I'll attend to those that have their links on their own layer and um, portfolios on their CV first. So please ensure you always put your links and your portfolios. Now, um, I'm going to talk about um, 
keywords. Uh, we have um, keywords that applies to every um, job, that applies to every skill. Um, we have um, some people for some for product um, for product managers. We have um, you can say product development for software engineers. We have keywords like um, Python could be a keyword. Um, product development also could be a, a keyword. Um, Docker could also be a keyword. Um, for each role um, you function as, there are keywords that apply. There are buzzwords that apply. Now, when we are using an ATS, it is those keywords that we key into the ATS and your CVs are screened by those. Now, let us say, for example, you are, um, let's say, for example, you are a maybe cloud engineer and I have to, you know, pass your CV through the ATS and I'm not seeing anything like maybe probably AWS or probably GCP or maybe probably Docker or Kubernetes and um, you claim to be a cloud engineer, the ATS is going to mark your CV down because those keywords are not there to prove that you are actually a cloud engineer. Same goes for every other role and, um, you know, every other, um, tech skill it is. They are buzzwords, they are keywords. If you don't know what they are, you can go on Google, type it in, ask for keywords. If you're a data analyst, ask for ask Google for the keywords for a data analyst. If you are a product designer, ask Google for those keywords and ensure you have them in your CV. Ensure you have them all over your CV just to ensure that, um, just to make sure that even if you have to go through the ATS, you stand a very high chance. Then um, formatting and readability. Now, this is where we have another problem. Some people have very good CVs that have all of this content we're asking for, but at the same time, the way it is arranged, the way it is formatted, makes it very, very difficult for us to be able to read, makes it very, very difficult for the ATS to even pick things, makes it unpleasing to the eyes. Now, um, if you're going to be using one format, ensure you are using a very readable format, a very, very readable format, and ensure you stick to that format throughout the entire CV. Don't start with this format at the beginning and towards the end, you're using another one. No, let it be one format. Then if you're going to highlight anything, you can highlight those in, you can just make them bold. For example, if you're going to put the name of the company where you worked and then your job title, you can just make those bold. You're trying to highlight for um, the recruiter or whoever is looking at your CV to notice. Then if you want to talk about your responsibilities and um, achievements, you can use bullet points. That way, we are able to know that okay this is one responsibility and achievement this is another this is another that way it makes your cv very neat and very readable i hope i'm communicating bottom line is your cv should be a uh, bottom line for um, this formatting and readability is use consistent fonts use bullet points and ensure it is neat and free of clutter then for the reverse chronological order, I'm, br I'm bringing it back again because um, this is a, an error we've seen over and over again. And I'm going to say it all over again. Please make sure when you are um, drafting your CVs and you're putting your um, work experience or you're putting your education, make sure the most recent come first. Again, ensure the most recent come first and then you can now take it backwards. Next slide, please. All right, so um, we're going to talk about optimizing your LinkedIn profile for remote job searches. And I'm going to be picking LinkedIn because um, it is the most it is the most common, it is um, the easiest way and the fastest way. I would say it's the most popular. It's the most popular um, professional networking sites for both recruiters and talents. Now, um, everyone should have a LinkedIn profile. I don't want to um, assume that everybody has, but if you don't have, you should have. It is very, very necessary for you to have a LinkedIn profile because for every recruiter, that is um, looking for talent, most of the time, 
if they don't have such talent in their database, the first place they go to is LinkedIn. And if you are not on LinkedIn, how then are you, how then are recruiters able to locate you? How then are recruiters able to find you? We are going to breeze, um, our time is fast spent. So we are going to go through this um, optimizing LinkedIn profile very quickly. Now, um, for, for your LinkedIn profile, I'll start from your profile photo. You should have a headshot. I see a lot of LinkedIn profiles and, um, um, I've seen someone's LinkedIn profile and person has a cartoon on um, the um, profile photo. I'm not going to, I'm not going to interview a cartoon. I'm not going to talk to a cartoon. I want to see you. I want to see your face. I want to be connected with you first before I'm even able to speak to you. Please, you should have um, your a headshot preferably. A headshot preferably. Update your LinkedIn um, profile photo very 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 necessary your headline your headline is immediately after your name there is a part where um, you're supposed to write your job title on linkedin you'll see some people writing maybe head of hr or social so company you'll see some people writing um um maybe digital marketer social company you see some people writing maybe projects manager social company you also see some people that will just go ahead and write um, copywriting, SEO, um, digital marketing. They just list everything. They just list everything that um, you know that they do on the headline. However, you want to do it, please ensure you have a head headline because that is what tells me. Oh, this is um, Patricia, and what Patricia does is project management. Oh, this is Kelvin. And what Kelvin does is product design. It just sells you immediately at first glance. Now, there's a part where we have a summary. Your summary to just make it easy for you. You can just use the summary um, you have on your CV. Just put it there. It is very, very fine. The very sh short summary you have on your CV, you can just put it on your LinkedIn. If you also want to elaborate and give enough details, Preferably, yes, please go ahead and do it. Now you have your experience. The same way you have it on your CV. LinkedIn makes it even a lot easier because they already have a template. So you just fill in the templates and then it's um, you know, it's fine. Just um the same way, your most recent, and then you take it backward. For your experience, your most recent, you take it backward. The same way for education, your most recent, you take it backward. Now on your experience as well, you put the name of your company, you put your um, job title, and then you give an explanation of what you do there and what you've been able to achieve, which is basically which is basically the same thing you have in um, on your CV. I, I know some people that use their LinkedIn as their CV. They just download it as PDF and they submit it as their CV and it works as well. That is because their LinkedIn profile is well optimized. Now, um, for skills and endorsements, a lot of people take this part for granted. But we as recruiters, that, those are the main things we look at, your skills and your endorsements. Now, if you have... 50 skills, please put them. I think the most LinkedIn can take is, I think, 40 or 50. However many they are, please just put all of it there. All of your skills, all of the tools you've used. LinkedIn even has a way of segmenting them, the skills, your tools, and then I think your soft skills as well. Just put every single thing. Because if I'm opening your profile or if I'm going to be using um, LinkedIn Recruiter from my end and I put in a billion string and I say I'm looking for um, a product manager with experience in this, 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 and I put it. If you do not have it on your profile, you are not going to appear on my search. Now, if I'm looking for um, a data scientist that has experience with... Um, let me say Power BI, Python, and all of that. You have it, but you didn't include it in your profile. While I'm running my search, you won't pop up because you've not included it. So please include. And then for the endorsements, reach out to your former colleagues, reach out to your friends, people that know that you have used these skills, tell them to endorse it. If, I'm, if I open a profile and I see that 
12 people or 50 people or 30 people or 10 people have endorsed a particular skill. What it does is it gives me, is like a sort of a guarantee that, oh yes, this person really knows what he's doing. He has worked with these skills and with this particular skill and this person is a witness to it. So that is what endorsement starts for, stands for. Then custom URL, there's a part where you're able to customize your URL. Let's say your name is um, Chris Johnson. You're able to customize your LinkedIn um, URL and just put it as Chris Johnson alone instead of the whole long um, URL that LinkedIn gives to you. It's um, that way you're able to sell. It, it, it's a form of branding as well. So ensure you, you know, customize your URL at, um, also. Your contact info, please put in your contact info. You don't have to put in your phone number, please. Just put in your email, your personal email, not your work email your personal email, your name. So I, I have um candidates that I've, I've contacted through um the details that they put in their contact info. Some even put their Twitter handles. Some put um, their, you know, GitHub um, handles there, uh, GitHub links there. And I'm able to reach out to them via the link and, you know, speak with them. Um, I have a, a, a CTO, um, I tried reaching out to him. I tried reaching out to him on LinkedIn. He wasn't responding. I had to trace him to Twitter because he had this Twitter handle there. So whatever means you know people can communicate with you, apart from your phone number, it's not advisable to put your phone number. But if you're comfortable with it, it's fine. But ensure you update your um contact info info then connections reach out to people connect with people connect with recruiters connect with HRs connect with um top people in your industries um LinkedIn is not just for job search it's a place for knowledge you learn a lot you get tips on jobs and interviews you get infos quickly just connect with a lot of people that you know would um, add value to you. Then regular updates, always ensure you update your LinkedIn profile, your LinkedIn profile. If you take a course, please update it there. Now there's a place for um, your certification, for your certifications. Make sure you always upload your certificates and um, every single thing you know that you can use to sell yourself updates regularly for each course you take, come and put, there are some people you open their LinkedIn profile, you see up to seven, 17 courses, that's when you open your LinkedIn profile, you see up to 20 courses, put it there, sell yourself. We all know LinkedIn is for bragging. Go there and brag. At least this time around, you're bragging with your skills and you're bragging with your achievements. Put it there, sell yourself and network. Next slide, please. All right, so um, call to action. Now I'm going to, um, um, I have four call to action points and I would like us to take this really seriously. Um, for those that do not have, the first, for those that do not have a LinkedIn profile, please, um, from now till next week, uh, next week Friday, please create a LinkedIn profile. For those that have already, kindly update your um, LinkedIn profile. Everybody update your resume using this guideline I've given to you. Please, please, please update your resume. One, one week is enough for everyone to do that. Update your resume. Um, you don't know when you will meet anyone. You don't know when you meet a recruiter that can just ask for um, your resume. And then you have to start telling them, I want to update my resume. No, your resume should be updated at all times. Your LinkedIn profile should be um, updated at all times. Please update it in the next one week. Then um, set a goal to apply to a certain number of jobs each week. If you want to apply to 10 jobs a week, you can you can do that. Set a goal for yourself. But I advise you even set a higher goal. If let's say you're looking for 20 jobs per week, you can even break it further down into daily goals, which is four um four applying to four jobs every day, Monday to Friday. That's five days which will give you 20 in a week. So just make sure you set a goal for yourself on the number of jobs you're going to apply and then you just work with that. Then commit to networking by reaching out to new connections every day. Yes, um, reach out to new connections every day on LinkedIn. Reach out to people. Don't just connect mindlessly. Please be very, very strategic with your connections. Connect with people, not just on LinkedIn, even in your community there connect with people, then sign up for relevant courses, um, 
or certifications, please, especially people in tech, certifications help, certifications go a long way. Please do a lot of certifications, Do take a lot of courses. It will help you, it will build your portfolio. And yes, hopefully everybody wins. Um, I want us to agree that we are going to take this call to action seriously. Can we all agree on that? All right. Um, thank you. We have another part to this, the part that has to do with the interview. But I'm looking at the time, and I don't know if we can go ahead with that today. Can we? Um, how long is it going to take? Um, as long as this took as well. Ah, wow. Maybe we keep that for another time. Um. Yes, I think that that would be preferable. Okay. And yes, to the person who is asking if the recording will be available, the recording will be available. People saying yes. What's yes for? Yes is we should do it oh, now. I told them, no, I told them yes, to. Yes, you can um, rush through it. That's fine. Another hmm. time. Another time, please. Okay, we're just going to do it another time. Um. And yes, the recording will be available. So, do you have any questions regarding what she has shared so far before we wrap this up? Questions, please. Okay, I think someone wants me to talk about endorsements. Okay, so um, for LinkedIn endorsements, yeah. Um, before I go ahead to endorsements, no, you don't need to add references to your resume. It's not necessary, please. You don't need to add references. If I need your reference, it's definitely going to be after the interview or during the interview. By then, I'll ask for it or the recruiter will ask for it. Wherever it is, your reference is not necessary on your um, CV. Now for the LinkedIn endorsements here, yeah, it's just you reaching out to your colleagues that people that have worked with you, people that know that you have this particular skill or people that have witnessed you, you know, working with those particular skills, they just need to come and endorse. They come on your profile and they endorse that skill to say, yes, okay, this person has worked with it. It's a click, just a click, they endorse, they endorse, they endorse and they go. It's not something complicated. If you're still an undergraduate, you can put your university education, but the um, but the dates, the dates should show you're still in school. You show you're still in school. Oh, there are a lot of questions. I can't keep up. Um, links to certified remote job site. Just go on Google. Google will give you all of that. Just ask um, Google for remote job sites to give you all of that. I can't, you know, start pasting all of that right now. Um, any other questions? I'm sorry if I'm missing your questions. There are a lot at the same time. If you have only secondary school certificates, please put it there as well. Put it there. But you know, if you have only secondary school certificates, you should have a lot of certific certifications to buffer, buffer that get more certifications. People with no tech-related experience. If you don't have tech-related um, experience, you definitely have other experience. If you are a salesperson, you should be able to sell yourself in that regard as well. Everything I've um, talked about right now also applies to those in the non-tech space as well. If you're still learning a skill, um, yes, you can put it, but uh, you're still learning it. You don't know it. There's no point putting it yet. There's no point. Yes, there are free tech courses on LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a lot of certifications you can check on LinkedIn. If you're posi positioning for yourself for more than one position, oh wow, that's a very, very technical one. Um, it's tricky, but there's a way you can do it. There's a way you can do it. You just, 
that's quite tricky and it's quite technical, but there's a way to go around it. It's not something I can explain. It's something that has to be very, very practical. It's tricky, so it has to be practical. Yes, work experience from tech and lecturing teaching can be merged in a resume the best way you can. But to be safe, do I just have two separate resumes, one for tech, the other one for teaching and, lecture, and lecturing to be safe. Cybersecurity and data analyst skill sets. Um, yes, just see, um, all of this is just is is just really simple. Just look at yourself. What are you offering? What skills do you have? And be able to interpret that in your paper. So even if you have more than one or two different skill sets, please put everything there. Or to be safe, you can separate it and have one resume for cybersecurity and have another one for data analysis. Um, it's six fifty five already. I think that's all I can take for now. Thank you very much for your time, guys. And I hope we were all able to learn a thing or two. I hope I was able to effectively communicate, and I hope my class wasn't boring. Thank you. Thank you so much, G. Thank you to everybody who joined. Please say thank you to Chi in the comment section. Say thank you to Propel. Let them know that we want them to come and take the second part. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so that brings us to the end of this session. The recording will be available on YouTube in a couple of days, Monday, perhaps. So bye, everybody. Thank you, Zoom, as well. If you're still here, thank you so much for responding to messages on the group chat, on the chat box. Bye.